today, we've got this magnificent Sabina. It is definitely not the biggest tree on stage, which I'm very grateful for, but it is a tree that has <clears throat> maybe some of the biggest character in terms of the movement that exists in this tree. Now I'm just going to ask Troy just to um, step aside so we can take a look at this. And I want to kind of show you the merits of this tree because it's very easy to understand why this front was originally selected. And you can see that this is a tree that's been styled before. It's not, this isn't going to be the first time that it's been worked. So when you see this and you, and you see the deadwood here, you understand some of the limitations or potential things that we might think of as limitations in the root system. We see this gin and we get that gin and all of its beautiful lines. We understand why this tree was placed in this position, but here's the thing. If you just close one eye and you look through a singular eye, you take away your three-dimensional perception of depth, and you look at this tree, what you'll recognize is that this line that runs through this tree is almost straight. But the problem with it is, if that was all we had, I understand that. But when you start to look at this tree from the top down, what you start to see is this line that we see when we look from the current front being straight moves in all of these three-dimensional ways. It twists up into the apical region. And you have so much more to pull out of this design in terms of quality of line. And when we talk about junipers, interaction of the living and the dead. The live vein, which Troy and Todd are cleaning up, and the deadwood, which has yet to be really super worked so that we can see that contrast. So just to start off with, Troy and uh, um, Todd are going to help me with the, the contrast so that you can see some of that. Then we'll establish that angle and we'll come back and talk about the design that gives us some opportunity to maximize the tree. One of the things about bonsai design is our eyes can really trick us because we know that there's something there three-dimensionally. And this has some proximity and similarity to the juniper we did last year as well. It's like there's something more in this tree than the cascading form of that juniper last year. There's something more in this juniper than that straight two-dimensional line. If I eliminate my bias, my brain knows there's something there three-dimensionally, but two-dimensionally you can't see it. And this is oftentimes, and I don't know, if you guys have experienced this, but you style a tree, you take a picture of it, and then you're like, wow, what happened? It looks so good. And I take a picture of it, and it doesn't look that good. And then you say, well, some trees are better viewed in person than in picture, right? But actually, this is where you start to say the camera is sharper than your eye, because the camera doesn't know that there's three dimensions there. It's not fooling anybody by talking itself out of the fact that you haven't taken advantage of the very best line possible. So if we know that that's a possibility, we can start to search and pull that line out where we're not utilizing our concept of three dimensions intellectually to place that character into the tree. So when we come up at this angle, what we start to see up in the canopy of this is just this magnificent amount of movement that you could not see from the original position. Okay? There's another concept here. 
and I'll kind of let these guys get stabilized. I'll rotate it and show you some of these pieces. But the other thing about this is this is a tremendous amount of weight physically and visually out here, hanging way off of the container, which I love. Asymmetry is a big demonstration of age. But this base is not so powerful, right? It's kind of lacking something. And sometimes we would say, oh, well, junipers don't really have a good base when they come out of collection, so you just kind of have to deal with it. And I would say, this is the same thing as saying a tree sometimes looks better in person than in a photograph, okay? Because we know that no matter what we do, this is going to be a very weak base. Now, the, the front, original front was chosen to show this piece of deadwood. Show it off, this is the, the heart of the tree, but you can't have a piece of deadwood compensate for a weak base and a straight line in the trunk if you have more character to pull out of that tree, okay? So instead of leaning on that and sort of accepting all of these things that we could talk ourselves into for a lesser design, we said, how do you make the base stronger? Well, what if this piece of deadwood starts to contribute to the base? What if we start to conceptualize in this angle, the bottom of this deadwood actually potentially engaging with the surface of the soil? And we start to say, wow, we can pull the container all the way over here. This piece can hang outside of the container. The edge of the container can exist somewhere over in here. And all of a sudden, our base grows by the width of this piece plus this piece. And now we have stability that can hold all of this asymmetry. And if we tilt this up, now all of a sudden, that two-dimensional line, if we're not talking ourselves out of it, is turned into this three-dimensional line that shows every piece of movement, foreground, middle ground, background, left, right, <laughs> twisting, rotating, rotating. We get that contrast of live and dead, and all of a sudden we start to see this tree come to life. I'm gonna say, there's a lot of really good Sabina junipers. You've all walked through the vendor area. Tons of good Sabina junipers. Finding a tree that's truly great. It's truly spectacularly great. Those are the rare trees, right? They're the expensive trees but they're also the ones that are harder to find. And when I saw this Sabina, I said, this is a tree that can be truly, truly great. A very special Sabina. So we're gonna see if we can continue to tease out some of that character. We're gonna wash the deadwood. I'm gonna continue to eliminate branches. I'm gonna set a little bit of the structure. I'll walk you through the big moves. Here, this was our apex that was sitting on top of the tree. But when you start to turn this into the apex, the continuation of the line based the tip, defining the trunk line, right? Because this could be the trunk line, 
But if this is the continued trunk line showing this better position that shows all of this nuance to the line and increases the strength of the base, we would have to lose this piece above it. Okay, because you can't have something up here and bring it down as a branch and then have your apex. It, it, it kind of creates a nightmare over the long run of that tree. So if that's the case, this has to turn into a branch. And here's the problem with this branch. This branch is right in front of this piece of dead wood that originally led to the initial selection of the front. And although we said, hey, listen, this tree isn't just a piece of dead wood. It's got a great base. It's got incredible movement. We're going to maximize those pieces. This gym's pretty awesome. It's still pretty awesome. Okay? So I don't want to cover that up, but I need to turn this in terms of the priority and the definition of the line base to now my new tip, this being our apical region. I need to go ahead and decrease the priority of this so that I can use it in the design, orient it around this deadwood, but not hide the deadwood with it. Right? And untying everything, as much as I don't super know how I feel about this, okay, untying everything and just simplifying this a little bit, We're going to go there, okay? Now what this does is this opens up more of the quality of the line, right? It's not about creating density around all of the character that you can't duplicate, right? The trunk, all of this is what is, it's why this tree is so valuable. It's why it's so interesting. We get drawn into creating these big foyer masses, this big dense dome of green, kind of placing it on top of this really erratic structure and saying, okay, we've done bonsai. But that big dense dome of green oftentimes is hiding the best parts of the tree. Now we have to cover the best parts of the tree and then pull back and then grow and cover it and then pull back again. This is the process of evolution and development. So where this tree is at, having been styled once, maybe twice, maybe three times, right? Definitely not an initial styling today. Pulling back again and opening up those vistas and those visible points where we see that quality. Okay, so now what we've done is we've transitioned to this line up in the apical region, coming off of that twist, wrapping back up in and around itself, and our apex is now going to be here. We need to move this forward. I need to drop this down and hopefully away so that I don't cover up that gym, and use this as that defining piece that gives me that asymmetrical flow to the right, and that's kind of where we're headed now. Good, you're not going to be able to pull them, so you're going to have to have pliers on the short. You're going to have to have your hand on the long. Here it comes. Right below that tie. Right below it. Plier, plier, plier work. Yeah. Okay, get one turn on that. Just one turn. Okay. Okay, now if I let it go, it's going to pop. So come back up. Okay, I just need you to apply upward pressure on that tip right there. Okay, I'm going to feed this through. I want you to tie to the rebar. Okay, nice and clean. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come right underneath you there. Okay. Give it to me right there. Okay, and I'm going to push. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. Okay, I'm going to crank on this and I just got to watch the rebar, okay? side of the rebar. Okay, give me the same gauge wire as we have here. Troy, can you grab me? Okay, Todd's got it. Okay, you need that other one. You're going to need that other one. Go ahead and try to, go ahead and try to, and then let's go ahead and, do we have 
more rubber. Yep. Okay. According to that you know, balance, I remove more or less clay. And then uh, I wait again. Sometimes uh, in a year, in a growing season, the tree is already strong again uh, because it's going to get uh, drier.
entire balance of the tree. Um, focal points of the design, again, not accepting the weak base, not talking ourselves into seeing a straight line when we know three-dimensionally we have more movement and in fact showing that movement, earning that movement in the design that we chose. And then I think the, the biggest piece of the puzzle is just establishing all of those factors in the design that set us up for the future of a tree that has not just five years or eight years of consideration, but we're literally talking 20 or 30 years of design consideration that we've just set up. Uh, you'll notice and you'll be able to see as you're looking from where you're at, the linear runs that exist in the, in the living tissue and the deadwood where when we rotated this, it separated and opened like that book that I've been referring to. So pay attention to some of that stuff. And then I think the apex, very challenging, definitively challenging, because there wasn't a lot in the apex by the time we were done with everything else. So we had to be creative, everything very structurally sound. And I think there's always a question of, are you just doing this for show? Or is this how you would actually handle the tree? Now, I wouldn't come here and style this in any other way than the way that I would handle it in my own workshop because I don't know how to do anything except for that way. Uh, so this three-dimensionally, if you just look at the whole 360 degrees, you do have that 360 degree distribution of design, not focused on any one single area as this point that we specifically tried to make look better than anything else. Uh, container, this is the big discussion prior, and I said, I gotta see what it looks like. Okay, we have the live vein on the left side of the trunk, we have a stronger base, and I know that I want my container to engage with this piece of dead wood. I want to push my container up as close as I can to this living tissue that drops into the container and holds the roots right here. And most of your roots are coming off of this living vein right here, where it enters the soil. So that means if my container can max out that position right there, I'm probably going to be able to get this dead wood to engage to a significant degree with the container that I want. But in pushing that asymmetry in that direction, you start to open up the door for the round as an obvious choice. Apex, when we use a, a round container, has to break the lateral boundary of the container, or else the symmetry of the container nullifies the asymmetry of the tree. Okay? So a round is where we jump into the pond of container discussion. But inside of that, this is a very, very complex piece of material. And a simple round container wouldn't really be enough. Visually, it wouldn't meet the tree where it's at. Consistently, it wouldn't complement a lot of the nuances of angle and strength that exist in this design. And I think that's where we start to move into the potential for a low floral container or maybe a, a sharp pointed mirror container where we get those protrusions that are extremely angular and start to tap into some of the nuances of the tree. The dimensions of that container is still going to be symmetrical. The, the apex of the tree still has to break the lateral boundary but we pull in a lot more quality and a lot more visual interest, which meets this tree where it's at, and I think that's where we would go for a container selection. Are we gonna repot this tree this year? No, this is, this, this is not what I'm trying to be up here doing, is styling trees and repotting them for you. But I do want to talk with you guys about how it's going to be repotted. Uh, tomorrow morning at 11, this is gonna be the subject for my repotting discussion in terms of strategies to how you execute a major angle change like this in a repotting process. I'm gonna walk you through just the, the essential knowledge you have to have to do this responsibly at Oscar's stand, at the Bonsai Empire stand. So if you wanna know more about that, come and watch that discussion because we're gonna, we're gonna walk through it on this tree specifically after we've made these dramatic changes. For the rest of this year though, it needs to stay at this angle so the growth all gets the same sunlight needs to stay at this angle. There's a drainage hole right at this lower corner, so we can water this as if it were in a normal container. We're going to have to pay a little more attention to it, but it needs to stay at this angle, and we can maintain health in this tree based on water moving through the system, drainage still occurring. And it's going to stay like this for one year before we come back and repot. Do you guys have any questions for me? Oh, well, we did it. <laughs> See you tomorrow.